we are live on Facebook. So this is exciting, guys, because we are doing a bonus live episode. So you guys get two episodes this week, which is which is really cool. Um, we've got a really exciting guest, uh, been a friend of mine for so long, and I'm really excited to have him on. But first, let me introduce our host every week, uh, Dr. Bart. For those of you who haven't um, heard us on the show, so Dr. Bart has been a healthcare provider for over 20 years, practicing a range of modalities. So he does chiropractic, acupuncture, kinesiology, nutrition and supplementation, and uh, functional lab testing all out of his clinic, Balance Health Studio in the beautiful Seagrove Beach, Florida. So he's also the founder of the Health Edge program, which is a virtual health program for entrepreneurs and executives wanting to take their health to the next level. He's worked with thousands of people all around the world, including celebrities and athletes. And so we always love to hear uh, what he's got to say on our, our topics every week. Uh, this week, however, as I said, we do have a special guest, which is why we're doing a bonus episode. And um, I'm super excited for this one. We're going to be talking about the future of healthcare with Dr. Isaac Jones. And so Dr. Isaac Jones is a functional, head, a functional health expert and doctor of chiropractic who is passionate about leading successful people to live in their peak state of health. And I've, I've seen him do this time and time again. So in 2010, along with his wife, he created one of the first virtual health consulting companies, uh, Elevays Health. And this grew to become the largest health consulting, virtual health consulting um, company in the world. So he's also the founder of Health Experts Alliance, uh, which through this company, he helps other doctors and health practitioners also go virtual. And he's been named the doctor of the future and featured in Inc. Magazine and a ton of other media talking about the future of healthcare and, and where it's going. So he's a world leading expert in helping executives and entrepreneurs access high performance. So I think we are gonna dive into a bunch of interesting stuff tonight. So I'm glad to hear from you. Thanks for jumping on. Of course, thank you. I'm excited for this. You know, uh, before we get in here, I wanna just kind of say, you know, thank you for being here. And of course, um, you know, it was a long, I remember the first time we met, I, I don't know if you recall this, you're down here visiting my neck of the woods and uh, I meet you at um, little, a great little place, uh, an eatery down here, uh, Black Bear. Black Bear, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you're with a bunch of other great people, a bunch of other, you know, doctors from around the world. and. Uh, you know, I, I knew that moment. I'm like, I like this guy. I like this guy. You know, I don't know anything about this guy, but I like this guy. And then we, obviously, <laughs> we you know, we connected real quick. And then, uh, and that was, that was what, probably, I don't know, four or five years now? Yeah, four years yeah. ago, I think. Yeah. You know, and then, um, and then we got to meet at some of your events that you put on. And, um, and then it's been, you know, from there on, it's just been, you know, a rising, a rising star with, for both of us just to kind of watch everything that's taking place. So, I appreciate so you cool. here tonight. I um, appreciate everything, honestly, you bring to the health world. And I, I do want to tap into a little bit of that tonight. Um, but I think more than anything, or we, before we get into the future of the healthcare, and I know how much passion you have in that. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pull some stuff out of you tonight, Isaac. Okay. I'm going to push your buttons. Like, not push your buttons, but I want to know, like, really what, you've got a grip, grip on this. You're over in Japan, you're here. So we're going to dive into deep. But before we go, if, before we do that, maybe, um, I mean, we can dive a little bit into your story. Like, how do you end up here? Like, why, like, why, you know, why chiropractic? Why, yeah. why leading? Why leading other doctors? Well, how did that? Yeah. Wow, it's a great question. And uh, it's, it's fun to think back about, you know, where, where I used to be and where I am now. You know, when I was a kid, uh, my mom and dad, they did the best that they could to help create the greatest upbringing possible. But I grew up in a relatively, like, low income home. And, um, you know, to go out to McDonald's was actually a treat. Like that was something that I, I looked forward to like, oh my gosh, we're going to McDonald's. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, a lot of steak and potatoes, a lot of like uh, chicken and rice, things of that nature. Um, and, and, you know, it was, it was I, I, honestly thinking back in my childhood, it was awesome. Like I absolutely loved it. My mom did everything that she possibly could to make sure that I, I was healthy and I, 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 I did, did my best. But the, the challenge was that she only knew one approach, which was, hey, if you're sick, let's get on some medications. She used to work in the pharmaceutical kind of uh, industry and her dad was uh, one of the executives of a pharmaceutical company called Burroughs and Welcome that eventually got bought by 
um, GlaxoSmithKline, which is one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the world. And um, he un unfortunately ended up uh, passing away of uh, what was most likely a drug overdose. Um, and so, you know, there were some challenges there, but that's all the, the all she really knew was this, this industry. And so I ended up um, being diagnosed with ADHD dyslexia uh, because of that um, for test taking, I was put in special needs and I was put on, you know, uh, Adderall and uh, different medications for my acne, you know, I was put on Accutane. Um, and so that was just all that we knew was just, hey, if you've got a symptom, you treat it with a medication. If you've got a, a health condition, you just patchwork it with uh, some sort of medical treatment, potion, lotion, or whatever it might be. And so that's, that's what I did. But what ended up happening was it sucked my personality out of, of, of who I was. And my mom freaked out. She's like, what, what, where's Isaac? And so that's what made her want to explore other options. And so I ended up working with a chiropractor and naturopath and um, they, they were together kind of teamed up on uh, figuring out exactly what was going on with me. And they, they took this comprehensive approach, which I know is what you do now, Bart, where they, they, uh, they looked at what was actually causing the challenges that I was dealing with. Why was I at the core? Why was I dealing with a lack of focus at the core? Why was I dealing with dyslexia? You know, at, 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 you know it, it, underneath the surface, like what was driving some of the other health problems that I had? I was always getting uh, sick and I had gut pain um, as well. Uh, so over the course of three months of working with these doctors, I literally went from being in special needs to straight A's in classes. I never got straight A's. I was like, I, I could remember things. I could absorb information that I wasn't normally able to absorb. I remember walking up to the front of the class, being one of the first kids to hand in a test that I took and I'd never be the first kid done, you know? And it was just like a surreal moment for me. I'm like, oh my gosh. So there was this massive upgrade in my performance, my brain function, my energy, and then also my athletic performance. Uh, that year I ended up getting the athlete of the year in my school. And, you know, it was just all around my body, my energy, and also academically the ability for me to produce um, from like more of an intellectual perspective. Now the intellect was always there. The focus was always there. It just needed to be released, right? There just, there just needed to be a, an ability to remove the interferences that were holding me back from being able to access this elevated state of being. And so I was so passionate about the transformation that I got that I literally was like, you know what? I wanted to be a business person, but now I want to be a doctor to help other people like the way I was helped. Cause I was like, this is awesome. And why was it for years that I was on medications and nobody told me about this in three months, I had my whole life turned around. And then I ended up getting an international academic scholarship to study in the United States of America from Canada. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. I went from special needs to international academic scholarship. Like, there are children in America right now, there are adults in America right now that are struggling and that have health conditions. They think it's normal, but there's an upgrade waiting for them. There's a, there's a new level, an elevated level of being that, that they can access. And so that's what got me into healthcare. And honestly, the reason why I want to help doctors is I want to help doctors get their message out there so they can get, you know, an impact more kids like me and more adults like my mom and dad and help them understand the truth of what, what the future of healthcare really looks like and what it looks like to really address the underlying causes that create long-term sustainability and results. Well, I tell you what, you just, you just hit some, like some major, major points that I almost want to rewind these because they're so <laughs> that I, literally for our listeners to hear tonight, some of these yeah. things that I, I feel like your energy building as your story was going. I absolutely love that. And I share a similar story and I'll, I'll share it some other night, but first you said, you know, that no one got to root cause. And, you know, I think we're looking at an issue right now, globally, where we're, 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 we're failing to identify causes right now. Um, you know, like what's the cause of the body. And I think that for a young guy like that, to have that happen so early in your life, it's such a gift. 
And that's the interesting thing that sometimes we get to look back at those things and be like, wow, that issue, the fact that you had the ADHD and you had the dyslexia, the gut issues and all that ended up turning into a massive gift. And then the part that we said that it released, and that is, that is the part that it's so like, it's so, it's so sexy, quite frankly, when you think <laughs> about all this potential, this, this superhuman potential, like human mm -hmm. normal status is good. But when we release it, that's superhuman. That's yeah. one of the things Karen and I talk about all the time. Like, how do we inch toward that superhuman strategy? Absolutely love it. And then the other part, which is, and, and listen, I think we share the same position on it. Some, the, the no one ever told you. There's a part of me that still gets a little like, uh, like, like, why didn't anyone say this mm. earlier? And my mom yeah. was the exact same way. I didn't go to my chiropractor until I was 19 years old. And in that moment, my mom says, I'm going to bring you to my chiropractor. And I'm like, what? I'm like, since when do you have a chiropractor? I'm like, what do those quacks do? Yeah. And it was like, it was just one of those moments, but it was, it was one of those turning points in life where I just got exposed to something different, mm. you know, and that for me, then it, it, same thing. I went to business school, got a degree in finance management, and then I get out and then finally into chiropractic, to the chiropractic world. And ever since then, very much like you, it's been how, what is it going to take to keep spreading that message and kind of keep telling the story? So uh, it's, I love it. And that, you know, one of the things that I love about you that I know you personally and would know you well enough that you don't take it for granted. Mm, like, no. no. Um, you know, and, yeah. And, and talk to that just for a moment here, because so do you get to a point, Isaac, and you're just like, oh, I'm good, man. I'm super healthy. I'm fit. I can run, you know, you know, 50 miles an hour and I can lift all these weights. You just stop. Are you good? Well, here's the thing is when you wake up to what's possible, you just want to keep on learning. Like you just want to keep upgrading. And so that was the weird thing is that I had had these massive upgrades, but then every year there's another layer. There's another, there's another like uh, elevation that you get to. And with new research, with the new uh, strategies, with the new uh, solutions that exist uh, with, with, all of these different things, you just keep on accessing a new level of vitality. And um, so, yeah, you, you never really get stagnant. I believe that when you, when you get uh, to taste what good health feels like and, and what you get to function like, and you wake up with energy and you go to sleep and you get great sleeps and you throughout the day have energy all day. And, you know, you, and I didn't used to have that. I used to And sit on the couch watching uh, BET, you know, music videos, and and like you know that was that was like kind of like what happened early on, and and nobody told me that the food coloring and Skittles made my brain go crazy. Nobody told me that you know all of these little things that I was doing on a regular basis, you know, was shifting my internal microbiome. Like obviously I didn't know about that back then, but like we know about all this now. You know, you can change your body ecology. When you shift the environment in and around your cells, you all of a sudden turn on different uh, gene pathways and you express differently on a single nucleotide polymorphism level to express these health promoting pathways that, you know, create an upgrade. And like you said earlier, this, this, this superhuman level of performance, which for me, if you look at the word super, that means above and then human is just, you know, normal, regular humans. So most people are just status quo. They're, they're like kind of going through life like the rest of humans are doing, but there's a, a level above uh, normal. And it's, it's like what I believe that we should all be able to access, which is that above normal, above human, which is the word superhuman that, that you guys use, which I love. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. So I want to shift just a little bit. I definitely yeah. want, we definitely, before we get off here tonight, we're going to talk about different strategies and where you really see the future and the, the types of practitioners and types of things that's available to us now. But first, let's, let's, let's address some of the things right now and we'll, we'll keep it, we'll keep it tight. We won't, you know, we could spend all night and I know this could be pretty passionate <laughs> but for yeah. people and it is for me, like, you know, I've, I've committed my life to this part of it. Mm. And, mm. And right here, right now, there's, you know, every day is a passion and an emotional day for me because I see uh, just the, the stuff that's going on here. Um, yes. Isaac, would, would you think, would you describe what's going on right now is almost an, an epic failure in the healthcare system globally? Yeah, so I would definitely describe this as an epic failure globally. You know, there, 
uh, a few hundred years ago, scientists were all, you know, th there was this, this phase that people were in, which was called rationalism, and everything had to be this kind of rationalistic thing. And what, what's rational in human thought to create what we know as knowledge and, and wisdom and information? And then we went into this world of empiricism where everything was all about the scientific method of, you know, uh, of testing things. And you've heard Bla of, of, of uh, you know, uh, of Louis Pasteur and the germ theory, right? So the germ theory was brought on the, onto the uh, market, you know, in France during empiricism. And, you know, it's this philosophy and really it's this thought that, you know, if you get germs, then you will die. That germs are what create disease, right? And um, Bouchamp uh, or Bouchamp, some people call him, um, you know, what he did was he challenged Pasteur's uh, philosophical tenets. And he said, you know what, like, what, what matters more is the soil, is the environment, right? And so what is known in history is that Pasteur on his deathbed said, you know what, Bouchamp is right that it's the soil, it's the environment that actually dictates one's health. It's not the germs that they get exposed to. Because- okay. Time out. Yes, Time out. yes. We gotta say that again. Okay. That, that part, and I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but this is such an important time right now yeah. to understand that very thing right there. So mm. say what you said there about germs versus soil and make that like, what does that mean to like you and I? Yeah. So. What, what Bouchamp was, was saying and, and that Louis Pasteur on his deathbed agreed, agreed with uh, is that essentially who you are as a, as a vessel is what dictates whether you get damaged or exposed by the different viral, bacterial, uh, you know, parasitic issues and, and exposures that we get exposed to. So the analogy that BJ Palmer used uh, was that of a garbage can, right? If you've got flies at around a garbage can, what does the garbage can have in it? It's got garbage, right? <laughs> if you've got a, a, a can or a canister, a vessel that doesn't have any garbage in it, are there any flies? No, right? So you, you, what, ends up, what ends up getting created out of this is that we understand that, you know, there's all these different people that are getting exposed to um, these different viruses and bacteria, et cetera. And some people are being affected, some people aren't. And the reality is the perpetuation of Louis Pasteur's uh, model that has been broken back hundreds of years ago by Bouchamp and all these other scientists is still being propagated today and is literally the, the, the core uh, reason why you know, we're, we're failing in healthcare. And so the future of healthcare looks at the body as a whole being. It creates a holistic uh, opportunity for you to have synergistic um, upgrades from one system to the other. If you upgrade your, 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 uh, your microbiome, if you upgrade your immune system, if you upgrade your micronutrient status, if you upgrade uh, your, uh, your, your overall um, you know, purity inside your body, et cetera, all of that creates an impact in your overall health and vitality. In fact, it, MD Texas Anderson, uh, one of the top research institutes in America, they came out with a, uh, with a study and you can Google search this. It says cancer is a preventable disease that requires major lifestyle change, right? If you, if you Google search that particular title, you will see that, that uh, meta study come up. And so why do they say that? It's because Inside of the article, they say that environmental toxins, lifestyle factors, all of those, the dietary factors, all of that actually create the environment for cancer to flourish. But we're not taught that in society, right? Doctors are unfortunately perpetuating the idea that you will get cancer and you should fear cancer and et cetera, et cetera. The same goes from one disease to another, one viral pandemic to another viral pandemic. This is not going to be the first time that this, this is going to be propagated around the world. And unfortunately, we know that the truth is we have to take care of the vessel. The soil, just like Bouchamp said, is much more important than the, the quote unquote germ theory that Pasteur uh, you know, realized was not actually an accurate theory to, to be basing his, his science on.
Yeah. Wow. That, that's absolutely beautiful. You know, I, the first time I heard that back in school about yeah. uh, Pasteur, I, it, it literally was one of those moments. And I was like, whoa. Mm. And what it really meant was, man, if I get stronger, the germs don't matter that much. And then right. the more I can do, the stronger I get. And we are, we're sitting in a time right now where, you know, all my clients know, all, the, all, all my concierge clients know it, all my, you know, people in my brick and mortar business. Every time I get on Facebook Live, tell people, listen, the answer here is we got to get stronger. That should be yes. the message wrapped around the world right now. We have yeah. to get stronger. And that's exactly what you're saying. You know, that was 50, 70 or, or however many years ago. Mm. But the same message is true. The challenge here is this, is it's literally the hypnosis it's the hypnosis of that theory of that germs make us sick. Well, you know, I think you and I, you know, can relate and, and Karen as well. We travel, we're in front of thousands of people all the time. It doesn't make us invincible, but because of our lifestyles, it gives us a much better shot at taking a punch in the face. So yeah. that, and that is, and I, you know, if, if, if the listeners tonight only take that away, like if you yeah. want to wake up tomorrow with a little more confidence, you want to wake up a little more certainty and feel like you're moving back into your life versus waking up in fear every day. Just know this, do something to get stronger today. And you ripped off like 50 things, your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit, you know, your diet, like anyone remove toxins, stop putting fuel on the fire. Love it. Love it. All right. So let's, yeah. let's slide forward a little bit. And so we, we kind of almost, that almost like to help us identify, like, what do we do? We got to get stronger. So, yeah. and I know this part super excites you. Where, where's healthcare going? Like, what directions is heading into? Uh, honest, you know, honestly, I, I love this topic, mm -hmm. but healthcare is going like in, in specifically to what you're doing. Like you are the doctor of the future. Mm -hmm. You are, you are, I, I know your systems and I've seen the, the results you're getting with people. And this is, it's like unbelievable, right? A doctor who um, actually looks at cause that, that collects data uh, um, that, that actually finds out what the underlying issues are that's driving you know, various uh, challenges within the individual's body, inflammation, whatever it may be, and then creates a customized system that's not you know, population-based, it's personalized, it's precision healthcare, right? And um, creates this customized tailor-made system that will create a transformation in the individual that is not just short-term attainable, that, but that, that's what medications do. It's attainable to, to get relief, um, but it's not sustainable to be on medications for the rest of your life. All these medications, they create deficiencies in micronutrients, and they also have other side effects beyond just that. But, but it's, it's, it's a, a doctor like, like yourself that is then looking at the whole person and creating this customized approach to actually transforming the individual's life. And that creates sustainability. So it's not just short-term attainable, it's long-term sustainable. And it's an investment because, you know, when you look at healthcare, the disease model is expensive. A lot of people think, hey, the insurance parachute's gonna cover me, right? But as Time Magazine and all these other, uh, you know, broadcasts and, and uh, research studies have shown, insurance companies are denying coverage more and more and more. And then the coverage that they do give you, what, what good does it do, right? It actually uh, perpetuates more of the effect-based, symptoms-based medical kind of approach to just, you know, covering the oil light with some duct tape versus actually addressing the oil that is, or the engine light or whatever it is in your car that needs to get addressed. So you're taking that approach, uh, Dr. Bart, and that's, that's, that's truly what the future of healthcare looks like. It's, it's, it's this cause-based versus symptoms-based, precision versus population, um, you know, very, uh, very customized uh, versus versus something that is that is like one size pit fits all, and then it's service centered versus more dictatorial. And and honestly, like you know, when I went into the doctor's office, it was kind of like the doctor was a god when I was a kid, and he just told me what to do. And then when I'm like interacting with you, when I see how you interact with your health participants and your patients, it's like you know, you're like, you're like serving them. You're, you're actually having a great conversation with them. And I'm not saying that all doctors are, can't do that, but it's a different model that, that we operate under uh, with, with what I call the, the, the new health model or the aligned health model. And the goal of this model is to help you align with exactly what 
uh, you specifically need to get to that next elevation uh, to help you access not just your human normal state of performance, but get to that superhuman elevated level of performance that uh, gets you more energy, where you can access higher levels of productivity, where you get more things done in less time. Uh, you're, yeah, you know, you have the energy at the end of the day to play with your kids and to travel the world. I remember I was working with a U.S. attorney judge out of uh, Washington D.C. And um, he, he said to me, he's like, Isaac, the reason why I'm, I'm wanting to work with you is because my dad, he was 70 years old. He retired when he was like in his sixties and he can't, he's in a nursing home and he can't, he can't travel. And so this is unfortunately the condition in which we're living right now. You know, you see autism just skyrocketing. You see neurological conditions like I dealt with when I was a kid skyrocketing. You see diseases and disorders getting uh, developing at younger and younger ages. And um, it's, it's just a, it's a terrible time uh, for diseases and disorders to be living. However, if you understand this new model of healthcare, then it doesn't have to be doom and gloom. It, it actually can be a very exciting time for you to live. And it's, uh, it's something where you get to access this really excited, elevated, upgraded self that uh, allows for you to, to, to live a long, healthy life. You know, I, I was having a conversation with one of, uh, one of my health partic participants earlier today, and it was interesting, a comment he made to me, he says, it is just too damn expensive to get sick anymore. <laughs> yeah, which is interesting because years ago, we would hear things yeah. like, oh, it's too expensive to blank and fill in the blank, like pay out of pocket for maybe like a chiropractic adjustment or something. But he said, it's too <laughs> damn expensive to get sick. He's like, you know, I got a family that I take care of and I run a business and he wants to travel. He doesn't want to be sick when he travels and all these other things. You know, so I, I really, I've witnessed over these last couple of years and I think we're on like this, this, and you can speak more to this. I think what was going to happen in the next five or 10 years just got compressed. Yeah. And what I see a lot in the, the mindset of a lot of people, the, you know, the health warriors out there, the people who are starting to adopt this superhuman, you know, concept of being like, wait a minute, like my mind still feels good. Like, and I wanted to keep that way. And, you know, this year I was fortunate to turn the big five Oh last year. And, you know, nice. and so, yeah. So like you, you get here in these different times in your life and you think, well, I'm probably only halfway here. So what's the strategy moving forward? And I see a lot of people, and you know, I work with, you know, men and women, you know, entrepreneurs around the country and, that have this same strategy. Are you seeing that, you know, I know you work with doctors and consult doctors all around the world. Is that something you're seeing more and more? Is there a, is there a, a paradigm shift taking place in the, the, you know, the responsibility of the health participant? Well, absolutely. Um, what, what we're actually finding, and this is actually shown in the research, is that the most educated people that have uh, either bachelor's, master's, or doctorates, or PhDs are the ones that actually work with doctors like you and I. Um, and so the more educated people are, and the more high net worth they are, the more they embrace this model. And, and so the goal is how can we get the mass the masses to embrace this, not just the intelligent in intellects mm -hmm. of the world that are, um, that are really well educated, like how can we get more people to embrace this? But what's so exciting is that the critical thinking individuals are, you know, they're, they're, they're like you said, um, they're, they're ch challenging the status quo. They're realizing that, you know what, like if I end up, they see their, their, their father, their mother, that passed away from cancer or, or, or Alzheimer's or whatever, they see that, you know, these diseases are six figure, sometimes even seven figure diseases, depending on what you're doing. And these are, this is out of pocket, right? And so if you think about the statistics, when these people put the, the numbers together in their head, they're like, wait a minute, okay, one every two people get cancer, one every two people die from heart disease, one every three people die from cancer, right? Um, one every two people will, will end up getting Alzheimer's at the age of, of 80 or, or over. Um, like, is that any way to live? One in every three people will get Alzheimer's at 60, uh, 65 or older. And dementia and all these other neurological conditions are skyrocketing. So it's like, what can I do to hedge, right? It, you think of it like you're in finance, you know, I, I look at it as like an investment, right? So what is the best stock that you could possibly invest into that 
could literally create an upgrade in your overall happiness and joy and everything. It doesn't matter if the economy is bad or if the economy is good. If your internal physiological state is, is, is amazing, then like there's not very much that you can get shook by, you know, like there's there, there, your, your internal states, your internal state, and you can maintain happiness no matter what's happening around you. You can maintain a high level of energy and performance. And so they, they do the calculations and they're like, wait a minute, I'm preventing disease, right? I'm saving potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, um, through, throughout my lifetime. And I'm going to live a higher quality, longer life. Like it just makes sense. So the goal is like, how can we get more uh, people that aren't as maybe educated as the people that we work with uh, and create this as a mass movement across the world? But definitely people are waking up to this uh, healthcare movement and they're, they're, they're looking to work with people like yourself um, because they, they know there's, there's unfortunately not a whole lot of people that have your knowledge and expertise and, and approach, um, but they're demanding it now. Mm-hmm. More people are looking for people like yourself which is exciting. Yeah, and I appreciate you saying that. And uh, recently I was reading something and it actually kind of disappointed me a little bit about some of the things that are taking place in our country. So we have this big COVID thing. And after that, over the last couple months, over a million and a half healthcare providers have been laid off. Like that doesn't make any, any sense. And what it yeah. tells us is that our healthcare providers aren't really providing people with the value and the tools that they need to get healthier. So when you say that, I think you're kind of right. And I don't, you know, there's, there's some other, you know, incredible men and women out there just like myself that are doing this work, but our, the concept, the paradigm of our system has to change at some point because this is the epic fail. We're laying off doctors in a time where the most fearful and that's, you know, fearful, 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 and it's, and it's of a virus and heck next week we could have another one, Isaac. That's, and that's, that's, you know, and so so I think, you know, as we, as we move forward, I think that these, this is sped up some of that, this whole paradigm shift. And I think that people are going to sit back. I think we're still in, there's a dust like that's still floating out there and it hasn't settled, but yeah. I do believe when this settles, I think a lot of people really going to um, really reconsider their approach mm-hmm. toward health. When I look at two things and um, there's two things that I think that some of the most simple, simple things, and I'm probably going to yell out for saying this, simple things for fixing, like flat out fixing, and it's heart disease and diabetes. And mm-hmm. we have over 600,000 people a year that die of heart disease. And it's these things that you're just talking about that it's if we change these and shift these and change the approach toward them, but if we wait until they all go bad, it's very, we're not going to win this battle ever. There's more people dying of heart disease year after year than any virus will ever kill off. And yet we still, like, we haven't really woke up to that fact that we can be saving lives. We can set quality of lives. And I, you know, mm. a lot of people I work with, I work with because kind of like you, you I think you were just mentioning a client because they had someone that they, they, you know, they, mm. they left too soon. They, they, you know, the father passed away at 55 or 65 years old and, and they look at that and it, it kind of motivates them. So, you, so moving forward. So like this, this let's, I want to tap it. Tell me a little about virtual. Like this is, <laughs> You like, so, so the audience knows that Isaac before, like, you know, things like are cool right now that things are virtual, you know, it's really a big thing, but you started this almost 10 years ago. Is that correct? Yeah, it was in 2009 uh, that I actually went virtual and then, yeah, 2000, 2008, I was starting to work on different concepts and then 2009 I went virtual and then full time uh, 2010 and yeah. It's, it's, it's been cool. Yeah. So, 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 and so, which is really interesting because of course, you know, I've been doing virtual for a couple of years and I'm very grateful. And I, and I thank that you, that you pushed me a little bit to move in and expand my capacity and ability to do it and have the tools in place and the systems in place. Because when COVID hit, I was able to just pivot easy and I still can serve our people, maybe even on a greater level. I think that there's a weird way. Yeah. This is going to sound crazy, but in a weird way, I feel as though I'm actually connecting even deeper with a lot of my clients on this one-on-one because they're in their own, they're in their house. I'm in my house. Like I'm, we're just like chilling in our living rooms, chatting, and that's and that's the beauty of it. So, talk to me a little about the fu- like yeah. v- virtual. What is wh- where are we at so, right now, and where do you see it going? Yeah. So the future, like you said, you know, this whole co- uh, this whole viral thing that's happened over the last little while has sped up 
everything. You know, it's, it's like the, the amount of people that were wanting to look for doctors virtually was, was already high compared to how many doctors were actually virtual. But now it's like the demand is, is way higher. And, um, you know, the, the, the future of healthcare is in virtual. It's in uh, customized programs for people that can get, um, you know, can connect with a doctor in, in their pocket if they want. And that's the cool thing. I'll, I'll be, you know, connecting with my patients who are in a taxi cab in New York City or something like that. And, um, and I know you do the same. So it's like, you can be anywhere. It's convenient. Um, you get unbelievable results. In fact, the research shows that, um, that, that telemedicine gets better results than in-office visits. Uh, but, you know, that's only, that's only analyzing the medical community, right? Let alone the functional health community and the things that we do for people. Like, I just know that, you know, over the, 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 the years of developing these different systems and programs that you've taken to an, an even uh, a better level have uh, completely transformed people's lives. And they're, they're, they're creating long-term sustainable results in people. And it's all done virtually. And so it, it's like, you could be traveling, you could be at home, you could be going for a walk. Uh, you know, I always tell people on calls like, Hey, you know, if you don't want to be sitting, you want to go for like a walk in the park or something like that. Um, you, you know, just, just know I may do the same thing. Uh, that's totally cool. So it's, it's created this really great like approach to healthcare that, like you said, people, people get connected with you at a deeper level. There's more intimacy, authenticity, and, um, and then it's, it, it is really the best way to kind of integrate all of the available technologies that help people get results, because that's another aspect of what the future of healthcare looks like, looks like is this ability to integrate technology into our care plans to help monitor you and, uh, and, and keep you accountable. And th this is just exactly what, what we're doing, but there's only, again, a few, a select few, uh, number of doctors that are doing this right now. And, um, you're probably one of the top in the world part of, of what you're doing for, for, uh, people that are interested in, in accessing this kind of healthcare, but you know, it's, it's going to be the movement of the next, you know, several years. And uh, I'm seeing it. I just see it all the time. And like you said before, doctors that are getting furloughed and laid off, it's just crazy. There's more sick people uh, in today's day and age than ever before. And it's not because of what's happening. It's the fact that, you know, we've got more people with diabetes, more people getting diagnosed with cancer, more people with all these other challenges. And then you, you add fear on top of that. And then you add stress because of the fear on top of that and all the other things associated with that, it's just going to create this kind of perfect storm, um, which is, which is, which is uh, unfortunate, but that's why we're doing what we're doing to, to be the solution to the problems that we're seeing, you know? Yeah. And this is um, all of this. Is, it's a, it's, just, it's a reminder. And, uh, and I love the passion that you're kind of sharing with me here tonight and, you know, and, and really all the listeners here. And I, I'm hoping that everyone takes away from this and that, there's actually a silver lining and, and it's crazy as it sounds. And I know this is the way your brain is working too. In the weirdest ways that this COVID is actually going to turn out to be a good thing for us. Yes. Um, it's got us afraid. And then what I love about being afraid, I'll, I'll relate it to the first time I went into um, my first MMA match. Um, and one of my coaches told me, hey, listen, Bart, um, you're not made of glass. It's okay if you get punched in the face. And, and I remember in that moment saying, that's right. I'm not made of glass. Like, so, and I was able to take some punches in the face and I didn't break. And ever since then, I've just had this like steam of like confidence and strength and power really realizing I can take a punch. And I think that that is about what we are to, to feel here in our country and hopefully globally that we are 100% scared shitless right now. And anyone can say we want because we're uncertain of the economy and all this other stuff. And there's, there's people like yourself and myself and, and Karen we're doing our best to kind of, you know, lead and level people up. But the fact is, is our country is really, really scared. But here's the good news. At some point, the dust is going to settle. And we're going to be like, whoa, we're still standing. We're tougher than we thought. And we're going to get a little tougher and we're going to finite some ways yeah. of moving through this. Yeah. High five brothers. Right. We're going to find ways and we're going to dust off the other stuff and be like, wait a minute. When I was at my worst, you weren't there to help me. And we're going to, in our own individual ways, we're going to find, because we got to dig deep in these moments. I know, yeah. I've, I've talked to so many people and they've gotten real. 
in these moments. They find out what's important yeah. to them, their families, mm -hmm. you know, their, their vocations, whatever they're doing. Like this is exposed a lot for us in these very, very moments. So it actually, in the weirdest way, excites me. And I know deep down that for all of us that are doing this stuff, it is hard. Like, you, you know, the grind the practitioners are going through right now, we're running uphill, like we're getting censored and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. At the end of the yeah. day, I know that as, as human beings, every one of us, we're strong. We operate out of love. It's always, the fear will try to push it down, but the love will always pop its head back up. It's like pushing a ball underneath the water. Like it always <laughs> comes back up. As soon as the pressure's yeah. gone, that love gets expressed. So I think, and, and I'd love to That's hear awesome. your comments on that. I, I, I think that this is exactly what we, oh, in a weird way, we kind of needed something like this to wake us up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, that fires me up just hearing you talk about that. And um, you know, th this, is, this is the exciting part of being human is that through adversity, you grow and you expand and you create new innovations and situations that are even better for mankind. And so, um, you know, I've got, a, I'm, I'm part of a coaching company. This, this guy who's um, coaching me has been coaching entrepreneurs and executives for the last uh, I think 50 years. And so he's in his seventies and he's been doing this his whole life. And he said, this is the, the craziest time in history I've ever seen. You know, his name's Dan Sullivan. If you ever want to look him up, he's got some cool po podcasts and whatnot. Um, and so one of the things that he said is Isaac, like I don't listen to the, the, the mass media because everything's so negative and fear-based. He's like, what I do is I look at the solution, right? It's like kind of like what Mother Teresa said. She's like, if, so if, if you want to have a hate walk, like count me out. But if you want to have a peace walk, count me in. So, you know, and, and when I was uh, learning from this, this one company called Strategic Brain, uh, they said neurologically, when you're focused on one thing like disease, what slips out of your hand over here? If you're focused on fear or disease, like happiness and health, right? They, they slip out of your hand over here because you're so f focused on this. Even when you say, hey, don't focus on this, you're still focusing on it because you're pink elephanting. Don't think of a pink elephant, you think of a pink elephant, right? So getting back to Dan Sullivan, he said, what I want to focus on right now is innovation, is creation, is uh, ingenuity, is um, the ability to problem solve because what he believes is what I believe is what Bart believes, Dr. Bart, is that, you know, there's no problem too big that humans can't put their mind together to create a beautiful and amazing solution that will make ultimately this world a better place. And what I believe is that there's a silent majority, not minority, there's a silent majority of people that are woke right now. They see what's happening around them. They see the deception. They see the fear. And they're like, you know what? I'm not standing for this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to question uh, all of the things that, that people are, are, are trying to throw at me, all the propaganda, all of the, you know, like, Hey, you just need to do this. Just listen to us, et cetera. They're questioning it. They start seeing the research. They see the, the false positives. They see the, um, the, the different challenges that are, that are coming out politically and how there's some, you know, agendas behind what's happening right now. So they're, they're like, you know what? And what I believe is that there's not a silent minority. I think there's a silent majority that are actually questioning and are looking for leaders like you, Bart, uh, and, and, and other people to stand up and just speak truth and, and be light in the world. Like you said, show love. Like, you know, my wife is African-American and there's obviously a lot of, uh, a lot of like challenge around race relations here. Uh, in America. And, you know, I, when I asked her, I'm like, what, what's the solution? She's like, you know, it's, it's loving each other and ultimately creating like this, this openness with one another where, where, where people do feel love, they feel cared for. And, and that there isn't this like hostility back and forth. And she, she kind of looks at this, uh, the, the things that are happening right now is not necessarily all good, you know? Um, so, you know, if we, if we approached it from a different perspective, like you said, it, it can ultimately change the game. And I, I just, am ex I'm excited as well for the future. I think it's going to be great. Um, and I think that we're going to be uh, coming out on top for sure. No doubt. All right. Well, I tell you what, that I, I, on that note, like that, was that's, 
That's awesome. And I, and I think that um, <laughs> everything I wanted you to help deliver tonight to our audience and every, everyone that we're going to like pass this on to, uh, you nailed it, brother. Um, uh, Karen, I think you have a question probably for uh, Dr. Isaac, don't you? Well, we like to uh, make health simple on this show. And I mean, you guys have, have talked about some awesome topics and, uh, you know, I've been, I've been listening to you getting fired up here myself. Like, uh, it's just amazing. So, so great for me to listen to great for everybody else. And so, as I said, we'd like to make health simple. We always ask the same question to end our show. Uh, what, so Isaac, what is one action that listeners today can take to move them towards their goal of becoming superhuman? Mm, that's great. It's, this is, this is something that I think it would be a different thing if it wasn't during this crazy season that we're in right now. Um, but all, a lot of the stress and the fear and the anxiety and the, the challenges that we create in our own minds, um, you know, they, they live in the world of what's not happening, either in the future or the past. And um, what, what I love in, in all performance and all uh, elevated levels of thinking cr get created uh, when we're living in the world of what is, right? In the world of what's happening. So um, there's two worlds, the world of what's not happening and the world of what is happening right now. And the future is not happening and the past has already gone. Like it's not happening right now. And so ultimately our goal is helping you access high levels of performance, high levels of mental uh, 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 performance and productivity. And so how can we access that? It's ultimately getting back to where you're at right now Right. And I, I remind myself all the time. I was, you know, I was actually frustrated with a lawyer I'm working with who didn't get back to me. Some of the stuff that I wanted him to get back to me over the weekend. It was a Sunday. I was with my kids and I deleted all the beautiful birds singing with the trees. I deleted like in my brain, I deleted all of the great things that were happening around me. I was getting irritated with my kids, my three boys soon. I'm, I'm soon having a, another little girl. And it, it's like, all of this was, was happening for me. Um, and, and literally it's because I was living in the world of what's not happening, right? Which was this guy didn't get me a document and it was ruining the time that I had. Um, so what I did was I actually just like took a deep breath. I went, and I just like centered myself. And it's through breath. When I get myself amped up like that, when we get ourselves amped up like that, right? When we're thinking about things that don't even matter, and we're creating anxiety or stress for ourselves that we're creating for ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, the best way to get back to what, what is, is through your breath. So yeah. what I want you to do is when you get amped, like I want you to take some deep belly breaths. And that's, that's ultimately what will help you reaccess the world of what is, the world of what is happening. And that's where performance lives. And so, all it looks like is this. You take a deep breath in with your belly. You do that like 10 times and it's a completely different state. And then all of a sudden you're accessing a different world. I did that with my kids. I'm all of a sudden now present with my kids. I'm all of a sudden hearing birds that I was deleting before in my brain. All of a sudden I'm like, what the frick? What was I even thinking about? Like, I don't know why I was so angry about this lawyer or whatever. So it creates this new level of being that helps you create a, a, a access to, you know, a greater, greater future. And I'll just say one last thing about this is that the media is going to throw, the economy's crashing. The media is going to throw, it's getting worse. The media is going to throw, you're going to die. And all of this stuff, it creates fear. And ultimately you don't need to accept any of that. And you can live in the present moment right here, right now, and not have to let the fear of what's happening around us control you. And, you know, sure you may want to look into certain things or you may want to be cautious about certain things or whatever, but that is a really powerful strategy that can help you create performance. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love that one because yeah. I, I, I need that reminder. And I've heard you say, this before but I need to hear you say it again and again <laughs> yeah, right but it is I, I love that idea of living living in the world of what is rather than the world of what isn't right so um thank you so much that's that's amazing my pleasure um, thank so you next, unless but, but next week anyway we are back to uh Tuesday night our usual time um 
So uh, any, uh, any last words before we sign off for tonight? You know, I'll, I'll just want, I want to thank Dr. Isaac once again. And big, uh, just a big amen to everything you brought tonight, bro. <laughs> Love you. And I want you to keep leveling up, keep doing your thing. Um, I'm praying for you and your wife to have another incredible baby into your, into your future and everything. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to, you know, coming back to one of your events and, and maybe we'll go down to an island or something. So uh, <laughs> just keep rolling forward, brother. Yes. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate your time. And uh, thank you for watching tonight. I really appreciate you guys. Awesome. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks, brother.